Hello, everybody. Look at this. <laughs> oh, sorry. Today we're going to be taking a trip down memory lane. I'm going to be revisiting two of my first ever favorites videos. I'm going to be referencing my 2018 favorites as well as a random favorites video in 2019. I'm going to be going through each product, telling you if I still use them, if I decluttered them, or whatever happened to them, if I replaced them with something else. Um, I think it's really interesting to look back at old favorites videos, especially at this time when I was first starting out, just because whenever I would try a new product, it was super brand new to me. I didn't have anything else to compare to. I hadn't tried as much as I've tried out today, obviously, so it's always interesting. No, 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 don't eat my furniture. That's not nice. I thought she was going to be a peaceful muffin in today's video, but she's going to be getting kicked out. Oh, maybe she'll be nice back there. But that's what we're going to be doing today. So before we get into today's video, I'd love for you to subscribe if you haven't already and let's get into it. I know everyone's just looking at her. <laughs> Lanny. I forgot to mention in the intro that I am going to be going in with the products I still have or the ones I replaced my old favorites with. So starting off, I have two random things. <laughs> The first thing is this fabric shaver. This is still the original one that I had in that video. Uh, it was like $10 at the time and I use it on a weekly basis. My clothes stay fresh because of this thing. I wear a lot of wool sweaters or just um, heavier things that tend to pill up, but this keeps those pieces looking nice and brand new. Um, yeah, I should do like a lifestyle favorite soon because ever since I started doing the monthly roundups, I don't really include uh, like random things like that that are really helpful in my everyday life. I'm gonna start gathering a list of things that I think would be interesting to talk about. Anyways, the next thing were reusable makeup remover pads. I don't really use them as often anymore, only when I need to really get in my eyes and remove heavier eye makeups. But other than that, I don't really use them for toners or removing my makeup. I mostly just use my hands for that. I'll either pour in my toner my hands or I just remove my makeup using a cleansing balm or oil. But I use them time to time. This was at a time where they were really starting to be popularized. But yeah, I don't really use them in my everyday life anymore. So now let's get into the first product and it is the MAC strobe cream. So this is a product that I tend to forget about a lot, but every time I revisit it, it's so beautiful. So we'll see how it goes today. I feel like I'm more keen on using products like the Glow Lust from Auric or like the iconic London Radiance Booster, something like that. But let's see what this looks like now. It's been a while. This is such an iconic product. I used it every day in makeup school. This is the shade Glow Light. Wait, no, no, <laughs> I mixed Glow Less with this. This is Gold Light. Yeah, every time I go back to this, I'm like, oh, why don't I use this more? Because it looks different than like the Auric Glow Lust. It just glimmers differently, but it's still super see-through and it doesn't look glittery. It's really nice and moisturizing. It's pretty, but I don't know if I would say it's still a favorite of mine. So next up, I don't have a foundation nor concealer, so I'm going to quickly apply that right now. For my foundation, I'm going to be using my Dior Forever Skin Glow in the shade 2N. And to conceal, I'm going to be using the Lancome All Over Concealer in the shade 250 Bisc W. I just realized I didn't have a powder listed as well, so I'm going to use this Huda Beauty setting powder in the shade Pound Cake. And I'm just gonna use this under my eyes because I have a couple cream products to follow up with. So for bronzer, I have two of them. The first one is the Milk Makeup Baked Bronzing Stick. I have the mini now, and this is the only time I think I'm ever going to say this, but in the full size version, there's just way too much product. You get way, 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 way too much. This used to be my everyday go-to bronzer for a couple years, and I hardly made a dent in that thing because this stuff is pretty pigmented and it went off before I got the chance to finish it all. So the mini size is where it's at, plus it's easier to apply in this form. I'm just going to use it in the normal bronzing spots. I revisited this not too long ago in my full face of Milk Makeup, but I have not touched it since, so I don't think I would categorize this as a favorite still, but it is nice. Like it's easy to blend out, it has good pigmentation. The color is no longer my favorite. I find it to be a bit warm for my taste these days, 
but it still works and I still have it so that says something as well. This is my blending fan brush from Moda. Now I'm going to follow up with the second bronzer which is the Fenty Beauty in the Sun Sunstalker powder bronzer. Now I did not know that this was almost four years old. I would have guessed like two. I would say that this is still a favorite product of mine. I don't use it as much as I used to, but I still reach for it quite a bit. I really love this color. It suits me all year round. When I'm a bit more tanned, it looks like a contour color, and in the winter time, it's the perfect amount of bronze for my pale, pale skin. It never pulls to orange or yellow or red. It's just the perfect bronzer color. And I also really love the amount of pigmentation this one offers. It's a buildable bronzer, so it always looks flawless and smooth. It's not too pigmented, so you're not going to have really harsh lines or you're not gonna to have to panic blend ever. It just blurs out your skin and offers the perfect amount of bronzing. Yeah, I would have never guessed that this thing is four years old. Time is going too fast, you guys. Shockingly, I had a lot of highlighters to talk about. I feel like I'm less of a highlighter person, but back then, I was more into them than I ever knew. So the first one here is the ABH and Amrezy highlighter. I actually fell out of love with that one and I replaced it with the Nabla Skin Glazing in the shade Amnesia. It's a very similar formula, but I like this one more because it had a finer consistency. It's just a bit more skin-like. The pearl is a bit more smooth, not as chunky in comparison to that one. I just liked the color a little bit better as well. It just matched my skin tone more. So yeah, replace that one with this. The next one listed is the Nude Sticks Hey Honey highlighter. And I loved, loved, loved their highlighters, but I don't want this to become like a huge drama or anything, but I also wanna be honest. I no longer support Nude Sticks. I did work with them for like a year and a half, maybe less, maybe more. I forget now, but I had to leave my contract because I could no longer trust the brand. They would say one thing, do another. So I just kind of let them and I went out and started trying to find replacements for my favorite products from Nude Sticks and I found one. This is the Flower Beauty Day Glow Highlighting Glaze in the shade Ablaze. They have two shades, this is the deeper one. Um, it doesn't match me yet, but in the summertime it does. I wanna try to scout for the, um, the lighter shade. I know it was out of stock for the longest time, but that's what it looks like right there. You can see it's a little bit deep when the light's not hitting it. But this is the only highlighting balm that I actually like. It does something through and through and it doesn't make me feel greasy. I love that one. I also had this Guerlain Terracotta Gold Highlighting Stick, which I don't think I would say is a favorite anymore. At the time it was, I didn't have many cream blushes in my arsenal. <laughs> I don't know. Now that I've tried a bunch, this one doesn't really compare. It smells really good. It is really pretty. It has like a really nice silky texture. It's not texture enhancing. It's not glittery. Like it's nice, but it always is just a little bit too deep for me. Therefore, I never really reach for it anymore, obviously. I still have it though, but I never really use it. I wouldn't say it's a favorite anymore. I also have the Kaja Beauty Mochi Glow in the shade Luna. I love that one. I kind of feel like I miss it and I want to try it again, but maybe I just have some nostalgic feelings towards it or something. I remember it glowed different from other things I've tried then. It almost looked like pixie dust in the best way possible. It wasn't glittery, but it wasn't like a smooth pearl either. It was like glimmery. It was really nice and sheer. It had a fun texture because it was that squishy mochi texture. It was just different. It was like a, a cream powder, but it was so gorgeous. I don't know if I want to pick it up again, but I'd be curious to know what it looks like these days now that I've tried many since. But I think today I'm going to be using the Nabla Skin Glazing Highlighter. This is the one I haven't used in the longest, and I think these ones are too deep for me. I remember having to take my time with this one to really polish the pearl into my skin so it looks skin-like and flattering because if you just dust it on it kind of looks texture enhancing and that it's just like sitting on top of your skin obviously so you really want to work it into your skin to get that glass skin effect and to do that I kind of like paint it on and then I do circular motions. I don't put a lot of pressure on my brush, I just kind of float around here with the tips of the bristles. 
Now for blush, I had a couple here that I completely lost recollection of, both from ColourPop. There was one called Perk Up. I just Googled it and I don't know how I could forget this blush because I think it was my first bronzy blush. It came out in the Peach collection, like when they were launching those monochromatic palettes all the time. Yeah, they came out with two blushes. It was like a really nice bright peach and this bronzy one, it was like a burnt peach. So beautiful. I think that opened up my love for bronzy leaning blushes. And there's also another one from ColourPop. It was the shade Too Cool for School and it was actually a super shock formula. So it was kind of like a cream powder but also in a really pretty bronzy shade. But yeah, I decluttered them along the way. I think I replaced them with other bronzy blushes that I enjoyed the formulas more. And the last blush is here. Surprisingly, there's not like 18 blushes listed. It was highlighters, but the last ones here are the Glossier Cloud Paints, which I would say that these are still a favorite for me just because of how iconic they are. They've been in my collection since pretty much day one. These were the first liquid blushes that I was introduced to and they're still kicking around and I use them time to time although I don't use them as much as those days I still have like such a love for these I'm going to create my own custom shade today I'm going to mix the shades dusk and spark to kind of get a bronzy color I feel like it just makes sense because I think this is the time where I really fell in love with bronzy colors paying homage to that time in my life <laughs> so I'm taking about that much of dusk it's hard to control how much comes out, but that uh, that's what came out. <laughs> it's a little bit more than I wanted. And I'm gonna try to get a baby amount of spark. That's my ratio. And I'm using this Sephora brush that I lost the name of. It's rubbed off. I've had this since 2015. Mm, that's a little bit too much of the red. I wanted it to be a bit more nudey, close to my skin tone. So I'm taking more dusk. Oh, I love that color. That is so good. <laughs> oh my gosh, blush just brings me all the joy. <laughs> Look at what Ren did to my poor new sponge. I'm pretty upset about it, but it's okay. This side is kind of fine. It's okay, I don't blame him. It's so fun and squishy. I just finished applying my eyebrows and priming my eyelids, so I hope you enjoyed that brow intermission. There's this crow that keeps landing on my roof just outside my window here, and it kind of freaks me out, but at the same time, I remember it might be Damon Salvador. I'm like, primping myself. <laughs> Don't tell me if it's like a bad omen or anything. Don't freak me out, okay? But get ready for the long list of eyeshadow palettes I have here. I used to be an eyeshadow person. I was all about the eyes. I tried to get through the base as quick as possible in the past. Now I feel like I love the base more than the eyes, just in this moment. I don't know, maybe it's a little bit more equal now. So the first little palette is actually a stack. It's the Kaja Chocolate Dahlia Trio. I no longer have that. I decluttered it. I think it was replaced by this stack from Melt. They no longer have this one, which is really sad. And it also was replaced by the M Cosmetics eyeshadow palettes. These are the two that I just pulled out quickly right now. But yeah, I just prefer these two formulas over the Kaja Beauty ones. And I was just reaching for these a lot more. So yeah, I decluttered that. The next palette actually made it into both of my favorites videos. It was the Gemini palette from Melt Cosmetics. This one is so stunning. Like look at the inside. Uh, it's still one of my favorite palettes to look at and use and I'm so happy they relaunched this recently because I missed it dearly. It's so beautiful. I'm so happy to have it again. I also had the Melt 27 palette in here, which was Dana's version of her birthday palette and I actually got rid of that one. I think it went off or something. It was, it was just a bit too old. It wasn't performing like it used to, so I got rid of that. And it wasn't my favorite melt palette out of all of the ones they have as well. I also got rid of the Nabla Secret Palette. That's the one that had like teals and pinks and nice neutrals and fun toppers. I kind of regret getting rid of that one. I think I got into a decluttering frenzy one day and I was just like excited of getting rid of anything. Um, I still look for that one in my collection and I always forget that I decluttered it. So that was a mistake on my part. And I also decluttered the ABH Soft Glam just because I fell out of love with the ABH formula. 
and just the brand in general i haven't really been into their stuff for a very long time i found that their eyeshadow formula got dated after a while it was very very powdery and it wouldn't perform as nicely and if any dampness was on your eyes from like your eyeshadow primer or concealer it would really attach to it and it wouldn't budge like it would just get wet looking and odd they were a bit more difficult to use compared to other eyeshadow formulas that were coming out at the same time as that now we have a pat mcgrath palette it's the mothership midnight sun which looks like this it's the cool toned one i wouldn't categorize this one as my favorite these days from pat mcgrath i would say my favorite personally now is the utopian dreams one i feel like this one's me in a palette because it's like sneaky colorful all the shifts in here are always so exciting to me i just love this one to bits but nonetheless this is still a very beautiful palette and i still have it i'm going to try to incorporate this shade right here today you can't go wrong with a pat mcgrath palette to be honest and if you are going to buy one i always 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 say this i want you to love the color story so much that you see yourself using it often because they're so expensive the next palette i have on the list is one of my favorites as well it's the natasha denona gold palette I love looking at this one. It's so pleasing to the eye. <laughs> There's a lot of like everyday neutrals in here, but these over here, the golds are so rich and beautiful. I love the toppers. Uh, I love like the cream formula in here. These shifts over here are so fun. It's just a gorgeous palette through and through. This is definitely my second favorite Natasha Denona palette to have ever come out. Biba first, then this one. I feel like she just doesn't make them like this anymore. I don't know. It just sparks so much in me even though it's more basic. We'll see what I can do, but I wanna include something from this palette today. And the last eyeshadow palette I have listed is my Sugar Pill Pro Palette. So this is a palette with a bunch of singles that I picked. I invested in this pretty early on because I needed some good colorful shadows and I still use these time to time. These are probably expired, but I still use them. Most of these are actually discontinued as well, but yeah, I feel lucky to still have these. I'm gonna incorporate some of these colors in today's look as well. I'm gonna jump around, try to incorporate as much as I can without it getting ugly. So yeah, let's get started. Those are all the eyeshadow palettes. <laughs> can you believe it? Oh, I guess I'll talk about the eye toppers while we're at it here, because I only have two, three, three. So I have the Makeup Forever Starlit Diamond Powders, which I can't believe are this old as well. I still use these quite often on my channel. My favorite is 106, which is the one with the green shift. I also have one that has like a cool um, silver shift and a golden shift. I don't think I'm going to be using these today because I've used them recently. I also had the Hourglass Scattered Light Shadows. I recently decluttered those because they dried up and I was worried because they were old as the hills. They were so old. <laughs> I needed to get rid of them. Who knows what kind of things were floating around in there since they are a cream formula. So yeah, but they were gorgeous. They shined like nothing else out there. It was beautiful. And I had one more topper shadow. It's the ColourPop Lucky Penny Supernova Shadow. And that really reminds me of the Danessa Myricks Twin Flames Multichrome Pigments. It was kind of a similar idea. I no longer have any of them. I'm pretty sure I almost finished an entire one of Lucky Penny, if I am remembering correctly. But it was like a see-through glittery pigment with a really fun shift. And yeah, it reminds me heavily of these ones. So let's get to creating an eye look now that I've talked your ears off about every eyeshadow palette ever. I'm gonna be starting off with the gold palette. I'm gonna take this little dose of colors brush, bring you guys in closer. I'm going to start off with that teal cream powder shade, that one. I think it's called Python or Serpent. So I'm gonna start off by placing it here. I'm gonna wing it out, kind of. Well, yeah, I'm gonna wing it out. But I'm also gonna attach it to my crease. I'm just gonna make like a triangle-esque. I'm gonna concentrate it on the outer part because I'm, I'm going to try to incorporate a lot of other shades. Like I said, I wanna jump around. That makes me wanna play Just Dance. And then I'm going to take that same color and I'm going to place it right here. And I'm not going to connect the outer corners here. I wanted it to look kind of like a butterfly or something. Just subtly though. Just wiping off my brush so I can soften this. 
This isn't what I was originally going for, but now it looks like all of the other triangle looks that I was doing, but it's fine. I told you, this shape has a grasp very, very tightly on me. Is it a phase? Maybe. Maybe not. So now I'm going to grab that purple shade from the Midnight Sun palette. This one, it's such a unique kind of purpley shade, hey? Looks like that. And I'm going to place that on my lid. Actually, I'm not done with that Python shade. I want to bring it in my inner nook here. Whenever I say nook, I think of Nook's Cranny from Animal Crossing. I'm probably going to do that tonight and watch the storm. I've also like conditioned myself over the last couple of years to like whenever I feel anxious or I can't sleep, I put on a rain playlist and it knocks me out. So I kind of screwed myself though because every time it rains outside now in the summer, I'm like, oh, and I fall asleep. It's like I hypnotize myself, so it's not great for work. <laughs> Ooh, this is gonna turn out fun. I, I just got the vision. I just got the vision. Taking more of that purple to bring into the inner part. Now I'm going to incorporate a pink and I'm going to mix it up with my Sugar Pill Pro palette. I'm just gonna check if this works. So what I do to make it more pastel, I dip into the white first, then I go in the pink. And then I'm gonna add a bit of purple because I want it to be a little lilac-y. Then I go backwards and then I end in the white. Tap it off and then I'm going to place that. I tapped it all off. All of it's gone because these are dry half now. I'm gonna place that right here. Kind of a fun placement. And I wanted it to blend out that purple a little bit more. I mean that teal. What are my colors? I don't know. Gonna switch to a smaller brush, do the exact same thing, but with extra white. So I'm placing that in my inner corner. Oh, that's nice. Just a little matte inner corner today. And I'm going to add that on the lower to tie that in as well. Like right here. That looks so nice with that teal color. I love how they mix into one another. I'm just gonna go with the flow with this look. It's turning out really fun. And the last thing I wanna do, sorry, I have like cat hairs everywhere. I should not have let Lani sit on my lap at the beginning because it, oh, it's, oh, it's bugging me. I'm going to take the Twin Flames from Danessa Myricks in the shade Young Love, which is a pink reflect. It's like a pinky purple. I think it'll look good with everything happening. So I'm gonna take that and swipe it in the middle. Wow. And then I'm going to tap the edges with this brush. Now be careful, because I've done this before with these um, on shimmer shades and it kind of removes the shimmer from underneath of it. So you don't want to like tap, tap, tap. You just want to like do a couple, least amount as you can just to blend things. And then you leave it alone. Now I'm going to go repeat this on this eye, add some mascara and I will be right back. And here are the eyes all done. I did put on some mascara. I used the Essence Lush Princess. This turned out really, really fun. I'm happy I just went with the wind, but I really like the color combo here. Oh, I did have a mascara on here. here I'll zoom out a little bit. I feel like you guys are a little close. Count my nose hairs or something. I also had the Hourglass Mascara here, which I actually completely forgot, but I remember loving it at the time. I don't know what it's like, so I don't have anything new to compare it to, but my two favorite mascaras these days are the Mac Stack and the Rare Beauty Mascara. But now let's move on to the lip products. First up here is a product I miss dearly, and I just looked on their website and they still have them, so I might pick up another one, but it's the Lancome L'Absolu Lip Lacquers. This was actually my first makeup sponsorship, and it's really exciting because I'm working with them again for the next couple months here. Not in this video, but I have been, so it's been like a full circle moment for me. But these lip products were beautiful. They had like a really nice glossy finish, vibrant color, super comfortable formula. They had like a very silky, feeling glossy texture. It wasn't like a lip oil nor a classic gloss. It was different and they would also stain your lips. So it just did so many things in one product. I remember loving those things. I had all of the colors until they went bad in my collection. I miss those dearly, but seeing them again here, I want to pick them up again. A product that kind of reminds me of them slightly is the e.l.f. Glossy Lip Stains. I recently really fell hard for these again. My two favorite shades are Basic Beige and Power Mauves. But I also had the Glossier Gloss, which 
was my favorite gloss. If you told me at that time that that gloss would be phased out of my collection, I would tell you you're crazy because it was like my one all be all lip gloss, but it's been replaced by the Tower 28 one. This one's much more comfortable. It still offers that glass finish, but it's more nourishing feeling. The effect lasts longer and it just feels a lot better. It's not gloopy or sticky. And then the last two products break my heart here is the Bite Beauty Agave Lip Mask, the original version before they screwed it up. And it's so sad because they're actually going out of business. To me, it felt like they kept making business mistakes over and over. They kept discontinuing the best products and they would release some suspicious products over and over and over again. They kind of lost their brand identity at the end there. I completely lost interest in the brand in the last couple years ever since they discontinued the Agave lip mask and like the original multi sticks and the fruit glosses and just their original lipstick formula. Every time they tried to bring something back, it was nothing like the original. And yeah, you know, the end for me was the penis blushes. <laughs> I, I was like, oh, they're gone. I have to break up mentally with this brand now. And the last product is also from Bite Beauty. It's the French Pressed Gloss and Flat White. Remember how nice that gloss was? It smelled like coffee. The colors were so beautiful and Flat White was the perfect kind of lighter lip gloss. Oh, I miss them. Kind of a sad ending to this video, but in this era, I was not using lip liners so i think i'm just going to use a clear gloss today uh, might be a little little fun little throwback plus the eyes are a bit heavier i think it's going to balance it nicely so i'm using tower 28 chill oh my god i look like old me now or young me Ooh, let's just add let's see if this works i'm just going to add a little bit of basic beige from elf in here just for a little tint i should have applied those opposite but i didn't know i wanted to do this how would you describe this look? To me, it's like a, a rock pixie, a punk pixie. It's just the darker colors, but like a pixie placement, if that's even a thing. I don't know. I, I dig how this turned out though. The eyes are really fun and eye-catching. Um, but I hope you enjoyed coming down memory lane with me today. It was really fun to revisit all of these products and put me in my past self. Let me know if you'd like to see this again with my other old favorites videos. Um, but that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a like. And of course, I'll be linking everything that I can in the description down below. So feel free to check that out. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.